Hello again. I've had some requests on how I color fur, uh, pretty specifically on this little um, Jojo the Werewolf um, stamp. So I thought that would be a good video for today. And I'm just going to get started. This is Jojo um, from Sweet November Stamps, and I stamped him on Copic Expressit cardstock with Tuxedo Black ink, as always. And I'm going to start out with him because I, there's not a lot of defined lines. It's a pretty wide open space on this image. I'm going to give him a little muzzle and I'm going to start with my E50, just a light, uh, one of the earth tones, light brown. And I'm just filling that space in. And this is going to help give me um, a place to kind of take my fur when I start filling in the rest of his face. And with the clothes that I colored already on him, I kind of determined that um, my light source is going to be straight on um, with this guy since he's facing straight forward. I thought, well, might as well. And then, so my E42, I'm going to add to that. I'm just kind of back here in the back where it, the muzzle's kind of further away from our eye. So it's going to be a little bit darker back here. I'm going to hit under the nose a little bit and down under this chin and under his little lip there. And then I'm just going to use my E50 to blend that together. And you can do, you know, any any of these earth tones will work. Um, this is just what I chose to use with him today since you know, the papers that I'm going to be pairing him up with. Okay, so now I'm getting to the fur part of it. And the trick with fur uh, is there's not really any of the traditional blending, at least when I do it anyway. Um, it's just a lot of kind of flicking brush strokes. So I'm starting with my E31. And I am just thinking in terms of the way his fur is growing off of him, which I kind of borrowed from. I have a little um, Yorkie, and I kind of paid attention to the way you know, the hair um, grows on his face, and so, you know, it comes, I start down here by that muzzle that I created, and I just flick out, so it's, you know, nice and wispy and light on the ends, on those fluffy cheeks that were given him. So it's always just kind of growing out away from that muzzle. I'm going to go right over those eyes. We're not going to worry about that. And it's just everything's coming off this muzzle that we created. Just flick it so you got a heavier distribution of ink when you start and as you're pulling it away it's going to be lighter and wispier towards the end. Okay. And then I'll even take that, kind of reinforce our muzzle too a bit. So now I'm going to go to E43. Doing the same thing. And this is, you know, basically all the blending it's going to get is just um, by working this quickly. I'm not giving the um, ink a ton of time to dry in between coats, so it's going to blend a little this way, um, but I'm not ever going to go back and like circle blend anything. We want to keep these brush strokes, um, kind of individual brush strokes, to give that illusion of fur. Down here under his chin. And the only reason, you know, like I said, you can use any of the earth, earth tones you like. I just chose a lot of the E40s because they kind of have um, a grayish cast to them, which I thought would look nice for my card. But I do want to add some brighter highlights into his fur. That's where my E35 is going to come in. And this is just going to give a little bit um, more 
uh, gold brown into some of these highlighted areas. And you're just playing um, now with contrast um, between the browns that you choose to use. Okay. And I'm even going to start kind of creating a more defined eyebrow on him. So I'm going to take this E35 and kind of meet up with the lines that were given for his eyebrow. Um, And it just kind of, I'll be following that then with the rest of the fur as I continue laying it on. So I'm going to go to my E44. And this is where things are going to start getting dark. So I'll hit those shadow areas underneath his chin. And just pull it out. All of that little eyebrow area we did. Some long, some short. It's just being really wispy. And the E47 is my darkest. So I'm just going to get a little bit there. And just, you know, adding in a few low lights to contrast the highlights. Get around the bridge of that nose we created. Not an exact science by any means. <laughs> it's just getting the colors on. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my E35 and I'm going to fussy cut him out um, so I'm not going to really worry about going outside the lines. If you are going to be using a nest or any kind of shape to cut him out you'll want to be a little bit more careful where you start. Um, but you know I'm just going to start out here now and kind of flick my way back in. Always trying to follow uh, the grain of the hair, kind of like when we're coloring hair on, on people characters. How it would be growing, in what direction. You just get a lot more uh, directions um, that it's growing out of on on any animal type characters. Okay, and now I'm going to add in a little bit of E43. Kind of gray it up a little bit, but I'm kind of sticking with my lighter tone browns um, out here. Because I, you know, it's further away from his face, so I want there to be less uh, dark out here. need a little bit of dark. So I'll go E44 just to kind of get under these his little cheekbone whiskery type fur. That gives it a nice little shadow down there. Redefine that kind of the muzzle going down, or the bridge of the nose going down to the muzzle. And 
And let's see. I'm going to get a little bit of the ear up here as it curves away. And just the tips. Back there. Okay. So now I want to add a little bit of pink to his ears. So I think I'll go with da, 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 um, maybe an R12. Um, it's not too pink, but it'll give it a nice, we'll add it to his tongue there too. Okay. So we added in a little bit of R12. Now it's just the same process on his body. I'm going to start with my E31 and his little belly to give it the appearance of being kind of round and popping out of that little shirt he's wearing. I'm going to start at the top, little brush strokes, and then at the pant line, pull up, leaving that white space in the middle. Now our 43, the E43, just little quick short brush strokes. The 35. Giving us a little shadow down there. And the 44, even less of it. Almost just using it to outline a bit. And our darkest is the E47. And this is now, I'm going to start pulling across that white as I work my way back down. And we're going to create those highlights and lowlights this way. Because we're not going to blend blend like we traditionally do. Just working quick. Just back down the same combination ending um, with our 43 and then 31 to kind of fill in that white space. And then it's the same process, arms and legs, just kind of the grain is going to be coming down along that arm, along the leg. Up here. So 43. And it's just really loose, really quick brush strokes. We want to see the strokes. We're not blending them out too much because we want to see that hair, the individual strands of fur. here along that foot. I'm going to go heavier underneath the pant line and where the two legs meet just to give it some separation and definition. And the 47 down there underneath the pants. And then kind of at the foot there where it bends. And I'm going to skip a few and just do a little bit more E35. And the 43. And I'm going to call that good. Now I'm going to use the same combination that I did for the muzzle, the E50. 
just to quickly give his little hands and feet a skin tone. And then the E42 for the shadow. Again, just really loose. Missed a little bit on this fur over here. Okay. Let's see. I want to create more of a shadow underneath that shirt back there, so I just added a little bit of E44. And now, let's see, am I liking the way he looks? I think I'm going to take my E31 and just play around around this muzzle. In here and this is where you're gonna eyeball it and um, I want to fill in some more of this white space that I left and you'll be able to see that as you go and what it kind of needs but that's I mean fur is just pretty easy you're just not a lot of blending get away kind of from that mindset a bit. And I'm going to take my E ooh, so C9. I just want to darken up his nose a little bit. So I'm coloring right over that ink to give that nice black. And then I'll probably add a little bit of um, secure a clear glaze to give it a little bit of a wet look and take my colorless blender kind of push the color out of the whites of his eyes and if I want it even wider I can go in with like a sharpie white marker or something but I think this will do it okay and that is how I color fur I don't do it a lot. I don't do a lot of um, animal characters, um, but that's my general process whenever I'm doing any of them. And I hope that helped you out a little bit. And thanks for watching.